This is Unfilled Audio Spectral Processing for your steel. And today we're going to take a look how it works and how you can use it to create some very interesting effects. Hey everyone, Symphony Future here, and today we're going to do something that is pretty new for this channel. I am going to talk about something that I don't fully understand. And I know there's a certain Dutch YouTuber who has pretty much patented talking about stuff he doesn't understand. Uh, that's not normally how I do things, I try to understand it before I talk about it. And uh, even though he's way more successful, I think that's the better approach to these kinds of things. But today we are going to deviate a little bit because, uh, well, my friends from Unfiltered Audio threw a wrench in my wheels and kind of uh, made it impossible to understand what's going on, for which I want to thank them. Today we're going to talk about Spec Ops by Unfiltered Audio. And Spec Ops is a spectral processor. Now, this is probably not going to say much to you. Spectral is a little bit of a weird sort of word, like what does it mean in musical context. So that's why I delve into the entire idea of spectral plugins, uh, which eventually became a journey down many, many, many physics and uh, math channels on YouTube trying to find out how Fourier transformations work because that's what this entire thing is based on. And not to absolutely bore you out of your mind, and uh, also because I'm no authority in this sort of thing, and I don't feel very confident talking about it in great detail, I'm going to keep this rather short, but I think it is important to somewhat understand what's going on here before we continue on our journey into Spec Ops. A uh, small little thing in between, I am going to demo this with UVI Falcon using the Focalm, Focalm sound database expansion thing. Uh, my main reason being is that it sounds really, really amazing. And also it really shows the um, analyzer from Spec Ops really well, which is honestly one of the most beautiful things in, uh, in many plugins. It's actually part of their website designer logo as well. So that's pretty awesome. Although I don't know if it's still in the new logo, but it's definitely something that's pretty amazing to watch. So let's just first take a little look. Then we'll talk a little bit about FFT and then we'll just get into doing things. All right, so here we go. She's a beauty, or he, I don't know. But it definitely looks pretty cool with all these little colors and shimmering effects and that's very nice looking. But this actually has a function. It's not just pretty. You can also change the way it displays. If you think the colors are a little bit much or just into line mode, but really if you want to run this, this is the way to do it. with all those pretty colors. So what we are looking here is the spectral analysis of the sound coming in. So you have the left and right channel, left above, right below, 
And what is essentially happening is this plugin is using a very sophisticated mathematical algorithm to turn a waveform into a spectrogram. So I'm going to borrow this very nice little picture from the DSP guide. Just blow it up a little bit. Here we go. So the main idea is that you can take any waveform going in. So these are our basic waveforms and you can turn them into frequency charts. So a basic sine wave or a cosine wave, that doesn't matter of course. That's all about the phase, but the basic sine wave only contains one frequency, meaning you will get one single frequency in your analysis. And if you were to analyze a square wave, you would get these harmonic intervals, which reduce in amplitude on every iteration. And in this way, you can break down any waveform into sine waves of different frequencies and different amplitudes. And if you were to recombine those sine waves, you would end up with the exact same uh, waveform as what came in. Essentially, this is what the CMI does as well. It's uh, additive synthesis, only sort of reversed and really freaking complex. <laughs> so that's where we're going to leave our entire uh, little mess thing, because going any deeper really is pretty weird and complex, and it gets pretty crazy pretty fast. But the main idea is that this plugin will break down your sound into sine waves, uh, do some magic, depending on the effects you choose, reassemble the entire thing, and what you hear is the result. So our journey starts at the beginning. You have an input gain, pretty basic, and underneath you can set uh, how many of these transformations the engine does. Now, what it boils down to is that the lower you set this, the less fidelity your sound will have, but the better time response. And the higher you put it, the more fidelity you, you will get, so the more frequencies will be analyzed but you will also get delay, so things will no longer be in time. Uh, to demonstrate the most extreme example, I will just crank it to the max. Also, this will <laughs> really make your CPU very unhappy if you apply a lot of effects. But what I want you to notice is uh, up here is my uh, normal input latency, and I want you to notice the keyboard here, which will highlight when I hit a note. So, we go. Now this is the most extreme setting, but you can see there's almost a second of delay for it to get enough data to do a very uh, accurate analysis of the sound coming in. And once you start to lower this. you will get back into more reasonable levels of delay. So if you want to use this on very rhythmic things, which are very timing essential, you would like to keep it pretty low. Probably around uh, 1000 is I think what's usually set as the optimal. You can push it to about four. At which point you get a little bit of noticeable delay, but this is still pretty easy to compensate in your DAW. Uh, underneath here, you will find the window. Now, window is how it divides the frequency bins, because it doesn't split it into just one frequency. It splits it in little sets of frequencies, because otherwise it would simply be too much data to work with. And this basically determines how these sets are designed. Basically, it's one of those things that will influence everything behind it. 
So it's just a try as you go kind of experience to see which thing works the best for what you want to do. Clean just makes clean cuts. You also have some options to do some weird things. Not very useful to try to explain this any further. Let's move on. So once your sound is split up, it will go into the effects of which you get plenty. A really, really nice collection. And this is a combination of pretty normal things like your normal filters and brick walls and all that sort of stuff. Uh, you can cut and boost and contrast, expand, compress and all sorts of fun stuff. But you can also glitch and freeze and smear, in which case you leak out frequencies to other bins, which creates really interesting effects. So let's start there with the smear. Your interface is pretty simple. This sets the amount of an effect and this determines which frequencies will be affected by your effect. So you can set the start point and the width of the effect. So you can have effects only affect certain frequency pins and not the entire signal. But for the sake of demonstration, let's just put it all out there and let's add, let's play a note and add some smear as we go. So what you see now is that you get really clear dividing lines between each bin. And once you start to apply smear, The lines between these bins get blurred a little bit and the sounds become really... ...kind of merged together. So that's just one of the effects you have in your arsenal. You can also glitch freeze, in which case some of the bins will randomly glitch. Your amount sets how much and how often they glitch. So let's put it down. So this glitching is happening on a per frequency basis. So, so it's a very different, weird, and for a large part, somewhat unpredictable way of working with sound, which makes it really good for sound design, because you can get some sounds out of this thing that I don't think are available in any other effect, really. Uh, unless you are using another spectral effect, of course. But they are not all that common, really. Uh, let's do the random freeze. And now with the width set lower, you can see that the upper frequencies are still continuing to move while the lower frequencies are um, freezing. And this is essentially a really weird way of slowing down time. So it's kind of like if you put it at 50%, you're kind of like half time processing, but not in a conventional way. As you might notice, this thing really lends itself really well for very, very weird and chaotic effects, which I think is pretty cool. And although not equally useful for everyone, I still think it's one of those tools so unique and when used in less extreme circumstances, it can add just a little bit of a glitch or a little bit of a variation in, for instance, I use it a lot in bad sounds, uh, in small amounts, like really small amounts, really sub subtle amounts. And what happens is that you get these little frequencies that 
kind of stick which creates its own sort of rhythmic movement because they get refreshed in every cycle you get a little bit of a sound rhythm in it it's weird to explain but So tons of effects to choose from one of those cases where experimentation is definitely very useful to do. Uh, down here you get the speed which essentially sets how fast um, these bins are cleared or created with some extra additional madness going on. So if you mess with this things get pretty glitchy as well. until eventually the entire signal freezes. So what you're hearing at that point is a snapshot of the spectral content of the sound you're playing, which is a pretty trippy thing to think about. A little snapshot of a sound frozen in time. It's pretty cool. And this is something we will see in some of the presets being utilized with the modulation because it can create very interesting rhythmic pulses. Uh, underneath that you get some shifting. You get a harmonic shifter which basically shifts all the frequency bins a harmonic amount causing it to pitch shift. This is definitely where having a little more uh, resolution helps. You can also slide them. Which is unquantized and just inharmonically changes the frequencies of all bins. So you will see, for instance, trick to get because you kind of need a there we go so you see here this little blue, blue cluster of frequencies going on and once I start to move the slide you will see that the entire cluster is moved up the frequency range or down the frequency range and you can also stretch which is basically pitch shifting, although it is not quantized. So the relations between all the different points will stay the same, but it will move up and down the uh, frequency spectrum. Which actually sounds pretty good. Next to that we get a spectral compander, which is an expander and compressor in one. This doesn't work on the entire waveform level, but on the level of every individual bin. So once again, it's a different way of working. So let's just try to slam the signal pretty hard.
It's a little bit like multiband compressing, but it's still very different as well. <laughs> Which is kind of the, the gist of this VST really is. It's kind of like multiband, but then it isn't because it works on a fundamentally different level, but still it works very much on a frequency basis. It's just that it's working on a lot of frequencies and it's trying to reassemble your altered frequencies back together in a waveform, which is pretty insane to think about. So let's see, where do we go from here? Uh, we get the output gain, of course, and we get a filter, two uh, pole low pass filter on the output, which is actually quite helpful because a lot of these things will uh, end up having a lot of uh, high frequency signal. So this definitely helps with rolling that off. You can also, of course, filter here with a low pass filter. It's nice, it's nice to have one uh, on the output and you also have the mix controls. And this is one of the old style unfiltered audio plugins. Uh, which still has the modulation matrix, which I like a whole lot because this allows you to easily generate movement in controls without having to mess around with your DAW. Now, Reaper is a little bit unfriendly with modulation. Uh, if you're using Bitwig, you might as well use the Bit Bitwig modulators, hardware Bitwig modulators um, to do this sort of thing. But if you don't have Bitwig, this is definitely need to have. And you can go as crazy if you want to. You can add multiple sources to one control. You can also modulate modulators with modulators, in which case you can create really weird kind of feedback loop kind of contraptions, which you can then output to other modulators, creating even weirder. <laughs> sort of contraptions. Um, usable LFOs, input follower, macro control, sample and hold, step sequencer, and uh, rally pad. Sadly, not all the modules from Biome, but maybe one day we'll see an update, who knows? Maybe not. Still very nice to have some uh, extra modulators, especially because they allow creative people to do creative things. Like for instance, Richard Devine, which is quite a big name in the industry, I would say. Definitely knows his way about around stuff and definitely knows his way around glitches. So let's use a few of his presets on my nice little vocal pad sound.
actually let's follow the request of this plugin and let's feed it some drums because drums are also a great source for weird noises let's grab a little bit of axo let's do something So yeah, that's a pretty wide range of weird glitchiness and strangeness and smearing and stuff you can do with this to create all sorts of extremely weird and otherworldly sounds, which are near impossible to create in many other effects because it's just, it's pretty outlandish. And this sort of plugin will not appeal to everyone, of course, it's kind of... It's, it's, it's strangely chaotic in, in nature, uh, even though it can also be used in more constructive ways, uh, which actually are some presets we should probably just be going through as well while we're on it, because it can do some stuff as well, which is definitely more uh, general purpose use. Although I think, I mean, it's still for problem solving is great. I do think more of it as a very creative effect, but let's just go through some of the more reasonable, <laughs> sorry, the reasonable, I guess reasonable, uh, sort of presets to get a little bit of an idea of what those use cases are. Trusty drum beat.
It's also a fun tool, by the way, to just degrade signals if you want to get a sort of low Wi Fi, just dial down your FTT size and just throw on some. Where is it? So Spec Ops, is it for everyone? Probably not. Is it a very cool, very unique kind of approach to effects? Yes, it definitely is. So hopefully this video gave you a little bit of a insight or at least a taste of what Spec Ops does. You can of course download the trial on the Plugin Alliance website. So you get to play around with it for 14 days and see if it is something that fits your workflow. Um, and that's it for me for now. If there are any questions, leave them in the comments and uh, I'll see you around.